Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be doing yet another video involving the $5 Windows 98 PC. But this isn't just a $5 Windows 98 PC video, this is also an unofficial Windows related video as well. And let me just kind of explain. Um, if you guys haven't seen my last video, it'll be up in the cards right now, but basically what we did in that video with this computer, as you can see by what we've got running on the system right now, is we installed Windows Vista. And while it is kind of slow to use, it does still run. And uh, I had mentioned towards the end of that video that I may try to do this with Windows 7, and a lot of you guys commented saying, yes, let's see that. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Now, if you remember from that last video, I also actually upgraded the RAM in this computer to 512 megabytes, which is the maximum that this computer can support in its current state. And it is the minimum requirements for Vista. Vista needs at a minimum 512 megabytes of RAM uh, officially. There have been some kind of workarounds to get it running on less than that, but officially Microsoft states that you need to have a minimum of 512 megabytes of RAM. Windows 7 needs a minimum of one gigabyte of RAM. And again, we're going to kind of work around that because I have seen some people be able to run Windows 7 on 512 megabytes of RAM. And a lot of you guys said in the comments that you were able to do that as well and said that it shouldn't be a problem. So I don't think this is really going to be a, a, a issue. Now, how is this an unofficial Windows related video? Well, let me kind of explain that. You guys, if you saw this video, also know that I had to install Windows Vista from a set of CDs since this computer does not have a DVD drive and I don't have access to one at the moment. Um, I did try to burn a, or not burn, but I tried to copy the DVD DVD's ISO image over to this USB drive, use a program called Plot Boot Manager to boot off of this USB drive, and the installer ran, but it did not actually load successfully, and it basically froze, and I had to force power off the system. And I tried the exact same thing off camera with Windows 7 on this. There, there is a Windows 7 ISO currently on this USB drive right now, and it did the exact same thing. It wasn't able to load the installer properly, just got stuck on the loading screen, even after being there for about 20 to 30 minutes. So I was not able to find a Windows 7 CD image. So we're going to be installing an unofficial version of Windows 7 called Windows 7 Super Super light edition. I did a video on this. It'll be up in the cards right now. This is basically a really slimmed down version of Windows 7 that is under 700 megabytes, which just so happens to fit on a single CD, which is perfect for this use case right here. So we are going to be installing Windows 7 on this machine, just an unofficial version, solely because I don't have a DVD drive. All right, so you can see here that uh, a Windows Explorer window has opened up uh, and is currently displaying all the contents on the CD. And if I go back here to uh, computer, you can see that this is a 655 megabyte uh, CD. So that is, you know, the actual image file that is on the CD is 655 megabytes, uh, which is awesome because it's able to fit on a single CD. Before we actually reboot though, what I want to do is go into disk management here because I want to attempt to do what we weren't able to do in the last video, and that is actually dual boot the system. In the last video, um, I attempted to uh, save the Windows 98 installation and then install Vista on a separate partition, but the installer wasn't liking that. And basically the only way I was able to install Vista without any errors was to uh, format the entire drive and just install solely Vista on the entire drive. So we're going to try that again here and actually resize the uh, C drive right here. So we're gonna shrink volume. So we'll just actually go with these auto populated options right here, we'll hit shrink. Okay, so you can see that uh, disk management has just about trimmed this uh, partition in half here. So now we've got our C drive with Vista on it. And then on this unallocated space, we're going to create a new partition. Now we could have also just not uh, made a new partition on this unallocated space and done that from the installer but uh, it should also work even though that we have it done already through disk management. So we're just gonna let it format here. So we're just gonna restart here and uh, boot right off the CD and get this installation underway. All right, so the system is reading off the CD right now. Well, for some reason, we didn't get a message on the screen saying like, press any key to boot from the CD. I wonder if it doesn't display, for us. we're gonna actually press tab here. Okay, so I'm wondering if I may have actually somehow reset the it, it literally didn't even come up with any message saying like do you want to boot from the cd it just you know went and booted straight from the hard drive so i wonder if we can actually just disable booting from the hard drive let's just disable it is this not a bootable image i mean i booted from this before in a vm well everybody i have got some bad news so 
Uh, let me just tell you guys what I actually did. I went ahead and burned yet another CD with uh, Windows 7 Super Light on it, and well, it didn't work. So that's kind of unfortunate. It might have something to do with the image, the fact that I'm burning it to a CD. I use this program, it's called IMG Burn, Image Burn, whatever you want to say. I have used it for years, I've never had any problems with it, it's a great it's a great free piece of software, I use it to burn all the CDs that are, are featured on these videos for this computer, and for whatever reason with Windows 7 Super Lite, which is bootable, I confirm the ISO is bootable in, in a VM and it worked. What I've done is I have, uh, you guys may remember another minimalized version of Windows 7 that I took a look at many years ago on this channel called Tiny7. Tiny7, I went ahead and I, I still had the ISO burned it to another CD. This right here, what you're looking at, is the last CD I have in my house, or the last blank CD. Um, I mean, of course, the thing isn't blank anymore, but I don't have any more CDs to, to burn ISO images to in this house today at the moment. So if this doesn't work, then, well, we're basically out of luck, at least for the time being. Um, I can probably tomorrow, I mean, you, you guys, if you're seeing this video, obviously I was able to work something out, but for right now, in like real time when I'm making this video, I don't have any other options at the moment. We're going to put in Tiny7 here and hope that it works. Um, let's go ahead and close that drive right here. Let's go ahead and press a key. And it might just say invalid boot disk because it's trying to read from the floppy disk. We'll see if it doesn't work. We'll try to reboot the... Uh, Yep, it's doing that same thing, so we will go ahead and restart the system. IMG Burn has a, like, it was able to detect this as a bootable image file. So it has, you know, it had that option selected when I burned all three of these images. Um, or, you know, like the one image twice and then this image here for Tiny7. But on my computer, it finished burning the CD and when I went into Windows Explorer to look at all the drives on my system, you know how normally Windows 7 will have like this icon where it'll kind of like have it next to the CD to kind of let you know it's an installer image? Well, this one didn't have that. All three of these CDs, the two images that I burned, uh, just had a standard CD symbol. We're just gonna go over here to the boot tab, we're going to disable everything except for the CD drive at the moment. So the only thing this machine is going to be able to boot off of is the CD-ROM. And if it can't, it's just not going to do anything. Or it's going to say, like, uh, invalid boot device. So we're going to go ahead over to Exit, Save Changes, Yes, and let's hope that this works. So let's see here. It's doing the floppy drive seek test. Not going to find anything. And... The CD is spinning up right now. Invalid boot diskette. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is, uh... Maybe that's because they were designed for a DVD. I'm, sh I'm sure it has something to do with that, because this is the first time I've ever experienced this. I guess I'm gonna have to go out and... Well, there's a couple options. I am actually looking right now at getting a DVD drive for this computer. Alright, so we are back, and you guys really can't tell, but uh, there has been a week's worth of time that has passed in between uh, the last clip and the clip that you're watching right now, and that's because I actually went ahead and decided to purchase a DVD drive for this computer. And it just arrived today, and I just went ahead and actually picked it up. Now also, another thing that has happened in between these two clips is this computer got a CPU upgrade, which I documented in a video that'll be up in the cards right now. So this machine now actually has a 733 megahertz Intel Pentium 3, but it is running at only 600 megahertz. All right, so we also need to unplug the power and IDE cables from the old drive in here. And this old drive is definitely much larger in size than this new one. Let me just actually show you as we slide it out here. So you can see that this right here is the uh, size difference. So the regular uh, CD drive that was in this machine before is a little bit uh, longer than the new DVD drive. And you can see for the color on the front here, you can see that it kind of matches. Um, but it's probably as close as we're going to get. I might be able like to uh, do some retro brighting on this new DVD drive um, to kind of make it a little bit wider because it is kind of yellowed, but um, I am happy with this. It, if this thing actually works, which the seller advertised that it does, um, then yeah, I'll, I'll be very happy. So we're gonna go ahead and just slide in the new DVD drive, line it up with the uh, screw holes there, get it plugged in, and we'll be off to the races. All right, so we ran into a bit of an issue, a uh, big surprise, I know. Um, and the computer was actually not detecting the DVD drive like during the boot up sequence. And when I went into the BIOS, it was detecting a CD drive, but not a DVD drive. So I'm thinking that the BIOS in this computer might actually have to be updated. But the interesting thing is I didn't have this problem before because I had a DVD drive 
um, in this computer before that I just don't have access to at the moment because it's in storage. In that drive, I was able to put it into the system, plug the uh, IDE and power cables in, and put a DVD in, and it was able to boot from it just fine. Um, so this, what I actually did is I booted into Windows, Windows detected it just fine, and I was able to launch the uh, installer from there. And now I'm actually on the screen where I am selecting where I want to install Windows. So I'm going to choose my E drive here, and we're going to hit Next. And now it's actually going to copy the Windows files um, just from within Windows Vista here. So uh, that'll be useful because then when we reboot, we should be able to... Um, select our Windows 7 partition in the uh, boot manager that should show up and then we can continue the setup that way without even having to um, boot off of the DVD. Alright, so the machine is restarting right now and in theory we should be presented with the uh, Windows Boot Manager, and we should be able to select either Windows Vista or Windows 7. All right, so the DVD is still in the drive, but the computer did not actually like read off of it, so we are presented with the Windows Boot Manager. We're going to select Windows Setup. So here we go, guys, and you can see that uh, very similarly to the Windows Vista setup, the um, background is completely screwed up although it does look pretty cool. But yeah, the proper like graphics driver is not loaded yet. Once we actually boot into Windows, I assume that just like with Vista, it will load the proper driver and we'll be able to use Windows uh, just like normal. But you see, we've got the installer came back up here. Now we're on the expanding Windows files phase. And after this, we will most likely restart once again, and then we'll be able to put in our username and all of that good stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll be up and running Windows 7, hopefully, in no time. Alright guys, so that last portion of the setup has just finished up, and we are now booting back into Windows 7. And I actually just realized that I probably could have done this without even purchasing this DVD drive, because I could have just plugged in the USB drive to this computer, and, uh, you know, basically did what, like, what we did now, which is actually running the setup from within Windows Vista. I literally could have done that, so, uh, well... At least now we know that, <laughs> but we do have a DVD drive for this system, which is great. All right, so here we are, just now asking us to put in our username. I'm just going to put in uh, Michael, we'll put in my name, and for the computer name, we will call this the 98PC. Because uh, yes, we're still going to call it the 98PC, even though it's not running Windows 98 at the moment. Uh, we're not going to bother setting up a password. Uh, now it's going to ask us for our product key. We'll see if we can skip past this for now. Uh, yes, we can, so that's great. We will use recommended settings. And there we go. Just like that, Windows is now finalizing our settings, and we should be able to log into our account and uh, check out Windows 7 on this computer. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, the machine actually had to restart one more time as soon as I logged in. It, it uh, came up with a message saying that, you know, the machine needs to restart, so I let it do that. But we're now loaded into Windows 7 in all of its glory, and you can see when we go into the Start menu, we basically have the same thing in Vista happening here, where the Start menu literally takes up, like, more than half of the screen. And it doesn't even show, like, my user icon, like Windows 7 normally does up there, since the Start menu is so large. Um, but we can go into Control Panel here. And let's actually just press Windows key pause break to bring up um, the system properties and see uh, what hardware that the system is recognizing that we have. So uh, this is Windows 7 Pro. It's going to recognize that same uh, x86 Family 6 Model 8 Stepping 6 598 MHz CPU um, that it did in the last video, which was the CPU upgrade. Uh, it's got 511. Uh, this is really 512 megs of RAM, but Windows 7 is displaying it as 511 megabytes. And if we want to, we can run uh, Winver here to actually you know, open this up and show what version that we're running here. So this is, of course, uh, version 6.1 build 7600. This is the uh, OEM release of Windows 7 Pro. Um, and yes, we do also have the uh, network drivers. They are installed by default, uh, just like in Windows Vista, which is pretty awesome. And I went ahead and loaded up Windows Media Center here, which is a more like uh, graphically intensive program. There's a lot of like animations in this program. Um, and you can see that it does run but it doesn't really do like the animations like it normally does. It just kind of is a is a just like static change between these uh, different categories. But it still actually works, which is cool. When I when I actually launched this thing, uh, it like came up with an error saying that it's best if you have at least 64 megabytes of video RAM to run this. 
which that shows you how uh, underpowered that the uh, graphics adapter in this computer is. It's not even 64 megabytes. Um, but obviously this thing uses integrated graphics. The other type of upgrade that I want to do to this is also a GPU. So I will be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm also looking at going the whole uh, compact flash card route of actually using that or an SSD to install in this to kind of have much faster uh, you know, loading speeds, um, and also just to kind of make a video out of it because I think that would be pretty cool. So if you guys want to see any of those videos, be sure to let me know. But that is going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times a week on this channel. And as always, guys, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.